Today, the, the topic uh, was to think around the, the conversation and how to build uh, truly conversational uh, bots in this case. I will help. Uh, so, my name is Jose Luis. I'm not uh, coding directly, but I'm helping uh, to manage the, the IT team, developer team, and also uh, linking with the client. So, listening from the market what the companies are looking for especially for airlines, which is our main and core business. Alejandro? So, my name is Ale, I'm part of the development team at Carabello. And um, I'm here to support with any technical topic or any question that may arise during the presentation. Hmm. How many developers here, by the way? <laughs> How many of you have, uh, do, know what is a chatbot? Raise uh, okay. Down, no, no, keep it up. Down the ones that have not interacted with a bot, never, and developed a bot. Okay. <laughs> so we will we will try to keep it both technical but also informi information uh, general uh, knowledge broad. This is, this is how we are feeling right now, because we have at least uh, 50 people looking at us, taking uh, notes, recording, and, and it, it's not that we, we feel like uh, superstars, but it's, it's a bit impressive. So we, we, would, we really would like to keep it down. We would really like to have it uh, both ways and establish a conversation. You will see that the presentation, in, in short, it's going to be high level, inspirational, with some uh, technical details, you won't see any line of code, just to manage your expectations. If you want, then we can arrange another workshop. You can even pass by the office and take a look at everything. But we thought that it was better to first engage a conversation, uh, share our, our experience, and then uh, go deep dive into the, into the coding. What do we do? Why we are here? Uh, we are uh, Caravello. We build software for airlines. And the latest development is uh, airline concierge, airline assistant, airline chatbot, you name it. Uh, agents that are available 24-7 in all languages, in all channels, etc. So basically, we are behind this uh, opportunity, building, uh, at the time being, I think it's around six chatbots for the airline industry. grasping a bit what is what is the challenge about and how we have built the the, the platform uh, multi-layered blah blah business as usual but thinking about the challenge that we are facing which is mainly serving airlines that are global and also a bit special we have had the opportunity to build a, a, a platform that will support the growth of the of the servicing no matter the NLU so in this case, we are not developing NLUs, natural language understanding and processing. We are adopting existing solutions. And also, we are not being tied to one solution. We need to be adopting more. Reason why is because most of the airlines uh, operate in more than one language. And as we take, uh, if we take a, as an example, a uh, uh, North European um, Carrier, it will operate in Russian, Finnish, English, and maybe Spanish. So if you try to uh, implement an LU that understands these four languages, you are dead. So this was one of the reasons to consider building a platform that will support more than one uh, natural language understanding or processing. We have our dialogue engines. Again, depending on the carrier, you will face that some has European or America presence, in other words, messenger, but others has um, Asian presence, or so being relevant, line, WeChat, etc. Then we, on top of that, we build what is the business layer, which is the purpose of our um, chatbots, which is basically industry specific, where every, uh, where every airline can customize their own specifications and do the basic. If you think on an airline concierge, 
it will help you search flights, book flights, and do the typical uh, management, booking, at the back, flight status, all the functionalities that are um, made for the travel industry. Then we have the, the link, which for us is, is the layer where we interface with all the relevant systems. The chatbot by, by its own, it won't be uh, useful unless it connects with an airline system and performs a purchase, uh, change of the booking, etc. Payments, um, accounting. So this is for us the, the layer that interacts with all the additional services and systems that we need to to carry out from airline specific to our own specific systems and services. And the latest is all the reporting, analytics, logs, all the support to the business that add value at the end for understanding the real usage of the platform and the bots, as well as the security and the management of the, of the platform. But talking about technology, uh, we have built this on top of Botkit. Yes, um, so we use a, a variety of, uh, of this, uh, we have a variety uh, stack where we use Node.js, we use uh, Java, uh, Ruby, so we have a, a very complete ecosystem. Um, and, and for the dialogue, dialogue engine in particular, we use Botkit, I don't know if you have heard about Bot, uh, Botkit, but um, it's basically the, the, the base framework that we have used to, to build all the, all the, all the conversation and user interface. Uh, this basically, if nothing new, is just separation of concerns, like you can have in a, in a web app, for example, you have the user interface on one side, the business logic on the other, and all the other commodities on, on the other side. From our side, from the business side, one of the most important things was the time to market. So that's why we took the decision to adopt all or part of the existing solutions. And as a detail, we are now considering to use other uh, bot analytics, bot metrics uh, softwares in order to complement what we need to deliver to our clients. Our aim, and this is partially true, partially aspirational, uh, what we have now, it's here you have four, but we have about six bots in production right now. And the philosophy and, and the purpose of the, of the architecture is to enable the different bundles. So I want to search simple search, uh, calendar price, family first, all the specifics of our uh, business, re uh, really easy to plug and play, toggable. Uh, to be able to deliver the experience uh, seamless, no matter the channel, in different uh, channels. Uh, customizing the user interface, no, no, not only the images, but the colors and certain elements that the different channels allow us to customize. And of course, using different uh, uh, gates and, and systems. We are, not plug we are now plugged into Naviter, which is one reservation system, but also into the NDC capabilities, which is airline-specific st stuff. But again, uh, in short, uh, our approach is to build a white-label platform that every airline can customize uh, to build the chatbot that they want, understanding that they are all running into the same domain, airline-specific. So now about the... <laughs> Everything understood, you know who we are, uh, why we are here. Uh, taking advantage of the latest F8, uh, we wanted to, to share our opinion on the, on the latest con conclusions and also build on the idea of what is a truly conversational bot or where are the, the bots heading. No? Um, here we, ha we have one of the top managers, VPs, in charge of in charge of the messenger and the bots, and he is saying that at the end, uh, what we really need to understand is beyond the hype, uh, the bots are not going to replace the apps. They are simply uh, going to be uh, doing things very different, or they are going to be very different. And this is something that we have noticed so far. Uh, we, we have the real perception that at the end, uh, this is going to be uh, an evolution and 
if the evolution means that uh, you share kind of the same origin, uh, we totally agree. But at the end, we are going to be building different species with different uh, contexts. And if you take a look at reality, while having uh, the same customers with th three different uh, experiences, we will see that not only the webs, but the apps and the chatbots will share the, the need. The same user could be using it differently, but from the hardware to the experience and the delivery will be completely different. In one, you will have the keyboard and the two hands, but not only that, you will be typically sitting in a desk and having that nice experience in a comfortable environment. While with the smart devices, you will be on mobility and maybe you won't have all the uh, elements in the interface in the same way. And this, uh, it sounds pretty, pretty venal, but for us it's pretty important to break the myth and don't try to build uh, a bot on everything. We really need to think on the, on the use cases and the real uh, need use context that they are built for, which it sounds pretty trivial, but at the end uh, is for us the, the key point. Uh, we have been live for about one month and a half, two months and a half, uh, with one of the chatbots in Mexico. And we have now eggs, uh, thousands of transcripts and interactions from your us users. And at the end, we see that, that from the beginning, we were thinking on the usage in one way, but at the end, it turned that the people are more um, easy to not manipulate, but to guide within the, the experience that, that you want. And the use, further than the discovery, when they repeat, is pretty straightforward. So again, it's, it's a matter of thinking on different um, paradigms and use cases, something that has not been uh, done so far. For us, the real uh, use case of a bot uh, could be shown on, on the left side, uh, which, let's say, you can search for a flight in both a web, an app, and a chatbot. The purpose of the, flight, the, of the bot is that once you have proceed with your uh, search, with your booking, the bot should be your concierge, should be able to retrieve your profile as the bot is doing. So you are, these are your preferences. But also, for example, in terms of booking, uh, he should be, he, she should be reactive and remind you or offer you the possibility to monitor that price. Again, for us is on the, or the, or the mindset to follow in terms of, of the chatbots or bots is to build on personalization, but also on being a human servant, being a, a truly concierge, something that websites and apps are struggling. We, we were discussing on that, and, and we know that the app technology is not so far, but they are failing on delivering these type of solutions. On the other side, or the other flip, uh, the other side of the same coin, is that uh, we have a huge responsibility to don't screw. Here we have a, an example on experiences that go wrong. So imagine that you are trying to interact with the bot. I want a flight. Okay, where are you departing from? Perth. Where are you departing from? Perth. Where are you departing? And this is pretty annoying, and, and we have experienced this uh, a couple of times. So again, uh, the beauty and so it's like the distance in between the success and the fa failure is pretty tight, and the risk is, is pretty high. But the, our take is that the return, when you have one successful experience, it beats all. So again, um, bots are not here to replace the apps. Yes, you need to think on the real cases. Our guess is always go through the direction of serving people through uh, personalization, customization, and also um, being proactive, uh, pushing you notifications, relevant notifications. And the challenge, and the real challenge is to don't, don't screw it on the way. Because uh, in, in, in the Mexican way, we chinga tu madre ya nos lo han dicho un par de veces, or failing. So, 
the, the uptakes are really high, but the risk also it's, it's considerable. We, we have used uh, different screenshots of the same flow, which is a booking flow, which is the, the key thing on, on travel. Um, it's one of the most difficult things because you need to pick it, pick it right and pick it fast. Uh, but on the left side, what we wanted to demonstrate or illustrate is the possibilities of personalization. So you will see that on the th third prompt, we are retrieving the profile that we have built, blah, blah, blah. So by, by building a, a bot profiling system, you are able to identify the person by one. Because you have your, and Alejandro will illustrate that, you have your means of authentication plus the means of that channel. Yeah, so basically we store and uh, uh, build um, a meaningful profile for every user um, we use to, to build a, a meaningful and uh, uh, rich experience for, for, for the user. So we store, for example, which are the common preferences, uh, if he likes or she likes uh, flying uh, in a weekend on a Friday or a Saturday, or what are the bookings he has, uh, and everything like that. So that was part of the of the left art, the, like the, the uptake, getting it right, fast, customized to the to the niche specific profile of the passenger. And the other is that, and this is the uh, the beginning of the conversation before you go into the booking, that if you miss that opportunity because you get it wrong and you get it wrong at the beginning, this will never happen. You will never reward it. Uh, for example, uh, and this is more a, a personal experience, but uh, while pitching some venture capitalists about it, you always have this uh, clever than the rest manager that tries to beat the bot, which is pretty simple. At the end, if you try to be mean with the bot, you will make it, because it's simply <laughs> a bot. So misspelling it can understand, but it's very likely that um, you risk to, to crush the, the bot and, and so on. So, so we had this experience with one venture capitalist that uh, wanted to beat the bot and didn't have the experience. Well, for example, on the other hand, while explaining and uh, validating the PCI compliance with the bank, I was showcasing the, uh, doing the demo for, uh, for the manager in, in the bank, and I was not touching anything. I left the control to him, and he could complete, with a good faith, the happy path of completing a booking. He was not stopping, saying, whoa, 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 this will change the world. And, and at the end, this is, this is kind of, the, again, the, the two flips of the same coin, where you will have someone that want to make it um, lose the attention, lose the context, and, and make mistakes, so the experience will be horrible. And the others, that if everything goes well and flows, you will have the profiling, the preferences, everything, and will be fucking amazing. Fast, clean, and comprehensive. But the point is that so you have to write things well no, to the board? Not really, and this will come later. Okay. So you have the, the natural processing uh, layer that it will catch uh, some of the variations, and of course you can build on top of that uh, additional service to correct the misspellings and, and so. So again, we said one of the key things is that uh, bots are not here to replace apps, webs, and so, and, and then you have the other side of the coin, that which are the specifics. One of the specifics are the channels. You might hear a lot of people talking about Slack, Skype, all the platforms that support um, that support bots, and what's the what's the the take or what's what's the learning in this case? For us, other than the typical matrix of the people that share the billions of users that one platform has, and the type of specifics and the understanding and the segmentation of the user base, for us, from the technical perspective, once you got that right, the important thing is to understand that. All the platforms, 
play different rules. From, from the technical perspective, it won't be only about structuring the message, but also about understanding that, and I don't have here the, the case of Slack, but in Slack, you will be able to put bots into groups, so the bots should be listening to more than one uh, user, as well as, uh, and this is the, the stupid example of the templates, on the left side you have the carousel, or we call it the carousel, but what, I don't know what's the name, carousel? Uh, the carousel from Messenger, the equivalent uh, with Skype, and the equivalent with uh, Telegram. Both plat platforms are completely uh, and continuously evolving the templates, but at the end these are your constraints while building on one side, uh, the, plat the bot for that platform, and also on the other, while building an omni-channel or, or a bot that needs to support all the platforms at the same time. Hmm. And going beyond, what we see is that uh, MBC philosophy, it, it helps later to, um, let's say, um, extract the bot from the conversational interface as messenger and be able to treat not only chat, but also voice. So if you really care about your bot and you want to bring it to the next level, and being this next level, maybe a conversation in Alexa or, or even the voice itself, it's critical to really differentiate the logic from the presentation lever, layer, even if the presentation is or will be in the future voice, no presentation. So th this was kind of the first takeaway from F8, uh, understanding that other than the hype, uh, the evolution might be or could be uh, webs, apps, and now bots without trying to replace anything. And the second learning is even we don't need to replace humans <laughs> because it's still uh, artificial intelligence, it's a promise, it's not a reality, and we are still cleverer than the than the bots or than the bots we can produce. There are only a few that could be um, smarter than us. Uh, so the, the, main, uh, the main objective is that the bots you would be programming would never, never uh, have to fake that they are humans. So there are some stupid things that we did at the beginning, <laughs> like adding the typing. <laughs> while being able to give the reply ipso facto. In some cases, now we are using the typing mechanism or something that it could fake that you are a, a human when loading the flights from the reservation system or uh, processing. Um, for one second. <laughs> you can try to make it more human, like to give the human touch, but you should never pretend that it is a real human. You have to really manage these expectations with, with your users because otherwise, as the previous example of the, the <coughs> user that depicted the, uh, the previous slide, and when you get into the loop, I mean, of course, if you are a human, you understand that from where you are departing Adelaide, Adelaide is an airport, so you should pick it up at the first time. So trying to, to be real in the sense of I'm a bot, uh, it's, it's the first thing you can, you can do, it's, it's the, the thing that the, you're a must. Then we can talk about the personality. Of course, this, this bot can have a funny or, or funky personality, and this is what, at the end, if you're building a bot for a brand, for a company, you can pursue it. But at no uh, situation, we encourage people to try to be like a human. As Alejandro said, at the end, is, it's a matter of managing expectations. So you can name it on preparing for the wars and then being surprised. So I'm a bot and this is stupid. You will try to, you need to type everything in the way I understand it to really typing it the way you want and at the end learning that the bot can, can get it uh, right. When we say that, um, Bots are not as humans, uh, or even a bit um, worse than humans, we, we typically think on what they know. I mean, as humans, one of the things we typically say is like, these are my limits, I know up to here, the rest you need to check it. So you should do the same and expect the same from the bot. 
So you cannot think on building a bot for every purpose. Your bot needs to be domain specific. So if you book, if you, sorry, if you build a bot for booking hotels, it will be great at booking hotels and don't expect them to book a restaurant. If you build it and, and these are the, make the math, but it will be eight, four, 32 domains that API.ai is offering by default that you can further expand, but it's like, if you build a, um, a bot for web search, it will be nothing to do with uh, calendar and scheduling, nothing to do to directions and driving, restaurants. I mean, every domain has their specifics and you need to respect that. And you, don't, you should not be afraid of limiting the use of that bot to a specific uh, domain, which is from our side something compulsory. The second learning or principle, and this is more on, a, on my engineering, mechanical engineering side, uh, you should follow either you call it the ABC analysis, the Pareto, uh, 80 20, whatever. What we have seen at the end is that 20% of the inventory of the intents you build will add 80% of the value of the interactions. You need to focus on that and you need to deliver your key domain interactions, rich content, images, everything. Getting the context right, the username, I mean, focus on that. Then there will be 30% more of the content of intents, of answers, questions and answers, that will add 15% of the value. For that, what we recommend on is to build a knowledge base. In our case, uh, I don't know how to name it, but we have built a, a, a JSON file that contains 1,000 FAQ questions that are airline specific and travel generic. But what we do is to, to collect all the frequently asked questions from the, from the airline, and then we, we, we use Elasticsearch for, for indexing all the, all the queries. Um, so, and we can, so, so we can pull it from, from, the, from the bot when they are there the right intents or the right questions are asked. So we do kind of a semantic search on a and custom build for that specific bot knowledge base. The experience how it looks like is like I want to I want to know if in Poland I can drive on the left side. No idea. What I do is uh, if there is no a direct match on any of my intents I go to that intent that will do the semantic search on my base and experience how it's in the conversation is like, mm, I'm not sure about that. Let me check on your behalf on the knowledge, knowledge base I'm connected with. And you somehow uh, verbalize what is happening. And by doing that, you are able to, within a conversation with no rich content, deliver more value, 15% of the value, which is uh, interesting. And at the end, interesting. Uh, so at the end uh, for us, 50%, so expect unexpected, 50% of the, of the intents, the remaining intents, the remaining 5% value to say, this is perfect, this bot is, is perfect, will be impossible to manage. And in those cases, what we build, in specific for our airlines and brands that we take care of, it's the human takeover, human handover, you name it, but at the end is assuming that the bot won't be able to answer everything. So when the bot is blocked and has no valid answer, they can talk to a human, which at the end is supposed to be the, the perfect <laughs> agent to, to serve their needs as of today. So th these are our kind of key learnings and the numbers are not very far from, from the reality. 20% of the intents are serving 80% of the, of the queries and, and the value that performs mainly in our case, doing the search, the booking, and uh, back allowance, and the common frequently asked questions uh, with rich content. Picture of the bag, and the kilos, and the route, the network, everything that is uh, important for the airline, but also for the user. Another learning in, in this case is, uh, it, it's pretty, 
funny how these conversations or these bots are guiding conversations. And, and this guidance uh, is kind of a root. So if you design the conversation, if you design the experience the way you want, the users will end in the point that you, you want. And, and this is kind of a, of a learning. Um, if you were in the, in the first uh, workshops, uh, you might hear that we were using chatbots for, I don't know, two, yeah, from, from the beginning. Uh, in this case, we're not chatbots as we typically know now, we're chat ops, operational ones. So our business also is about getting upgrades for people. So in order to get an upgrade, you first need to make a booking. If you try to make a booking in the airline website, you spend 10 minutes inputting the credit card details, going step by step, horrible. So we basically use the API to uh, directly from the chat using command line as the uh, old fashioned black screens did in the airport. Command, then you get a booking and then you can use it on your uh, service, which in this case was the upgrade. So the problem what that, we, that we saw in, in the beginnings is that me, I was one of the stakeholders of the bot, of Tato in this case. This is the, the name of the, of the pet office. So I was using um, the bot and I was never aware of the latest functionalities that were added. So we could retrieve PNRs, buy PNRs, change, add bags, etc. I was never aware because we're done in between business and and for development purposes. So business was not always aware of of the new functionalities. And also, as you can read, this is the book creation. All the parameters that were inputted were, were horrible. Some airline, or we we hook with an, a new airline, and this airline had family first. So you need to input a new thing into the process because it was optional for this, but compulsory for the other. It was horrible. What we saw, or, or when, when I entered into the, into the new scene with the chatbots, messenger, and this new fancy uh, style, I discovered that it was completely different. I mean, it was, was great to say, I want to buy a, a booking, and then complete the flow. So, I, I didn't have to remember which was the parameter for from, or even if this airline had to specify the, the fair family fare, etc. I was simply being guided through a conversation. Question and answer, question and answer, and then I got it. Time consumed, I mean, the time invested, invested was almost the same. So at the end, what we were reading at the early beginning, so the new conversational, uh, conversational uh, interface arise, was pretty pretty confusing for me because I didn't I didn't know if it was pretty or, or was a, a conversational interface user interface or a really adaptive user interface where you could, you could only have the the elements that were relevant for that that part and in in that moment I believed that it was a mix of both it's a conversation because it happens in a conversation. But for lucky us, the conversation is adapted to our needs, to our function. So it's, it's pretty, pretty interesting how you can evolve. Driving or thinking about driving conversations. We see, we see that there are three key moments when you need to drive a conversation or how you can drive a conversation. The first key and most important thing is the onboarding. When you, when you launch a bot, uh, first of all, you need to be lucky. So they meet the app and they, don't, I mean, they access the, the platform and they hook with your bot. So then you get it. Second is, depending on how they get there, they might lose the landing page where you explain all the functionalities. So the, the most important thing when, when a new user comes into the, into the channel, into the bot, you need to onboard them and explain what are you what are you doing for them? So this is what we call the tutorial, the bot roles, etc. Kind of a, um, a tour that we can find in, in certain web pages where they explain all the steps, all the possibilities in a conversational way, on demand. We launched without this functionality. Uh, we did it <laughs> one week later when we saw that. Hmm. 
So again, uh, guiding at the beginning, guiding during the conversation. This is an example. From where are you departing? Madrid. Ah, sorry, I don't serve this, this, uh, this station. Look at the network and find the, the nearest one. Error handling is very important. There is a white paper on error handling that is wonderful, highly recommended for all. Uh, you need to, to do both error handling when there is no signal, so you might, or the bot has said something wrong if the, if the user doesn't input anything, but also while managing wrong inputs, helping, maybe it's the formatting, maybe it's the content, maybe, so working on error handling is key to drive the conversation in the place you were, you want to, to end, and then the latest is the learning center. Yeah, this again, this is an, a snapshot on the last part of the booking process. So once you have purchased, then you have the thank you message and we give kind of a tip. So maybe you have performed the booking in eight uh, steps and this is the explanation on how to do it in only one. So teaching and, and learning the, the users how to better use the bot and being uh, empowered. And this is the last slide, so you can relax. Uh, our, our key learning so far, uh, avoid the, the user uh, loops that end in overflowing uh, the user. Where are you departing for? Where are you departing for? Uh, go and fuck off. So prevent this from happening. Uh, so far we are building a, a little fix on that where we cannot uh, encounter more than X occurrences of the same uh, input message. So if you are asking the origin three times, this means that something's wrong. <laughs> so you, you need to handle, or, or uh, one of the key things is the error handling in, in the conversations. And then the, the use, but not the abuse of the natural language understanding. Uh, for example, and we were discussing this, uh, from the technical perspective, we have intents that use the, the processing layer and others that go directly from the back end. Uh, an affirmation, yes, should not be channeled through the, the natural. Basically, what we were doing from the beginning, uh, we used uh, NLU for everything. So if you have a, a pattern to confirm a purchase, for example, we routed everything to the to another language understanding so layer. So what this adds is an overhead because you have to be training for every different button, every different possibility. And then realize that you actually can skip any view for these kind of things and and use what we call internal uh, intents. That instead of passing through the NLU and then coming back, just goes uh, straight to the to the to the controller. And the latest is uh, at the end, some NLU interfaces and some training exercises are pretty tempting for non-IT people, but you need to keep it um, controlled. So again, for us, we are not developing NLU. We are adopting an existing solution on the market. And this solution in specific is not open. So for us, in some occasions, it's black magic. And in order to control the, the black magic, you need to be uh, consistent, to be testing which are the differences. So before coming, we played a bit and we test if understood the plurals, no? the pluralization of the, of the entities, then... Yeah, basically, the, we are learning in this, in this regard is that uh, we have the profile of, of the bot trainer in, in our team, and it's less technical people, and they uh, deal basic mainly with the, with the static context, say. Um, but they, we taught them how to, for example, teach the NLU to, to pick up new intents and <coughs> entities and things like this. But then we realized that if you don't have the right understanding of the domain within the NLU environment, you can really screw up things. So uh, the, core, the really core part of the NLU I think it should be restricted only to, to technical people. And not only te technical people who know exactly what they are doing when they are creating an entity 
or mapping an entity to an intent, etc., etc. By the way, how, how many people are familiar here with NLU and, and API at the end, tools, tools like this? Because I'm speaking about yeah. <laughs> of intents and, and things like this that maybe some people are not understanding. So this is, yeah, this is it on our side.